This is a General Electric VM65S three phase uh, watt meter, 200 class, which means it does it's 200 amps or uh, full full load. It doesn't have external transformers. The shunts are down in here. It's for four wire in three phase Y, which is typically uh, could be like 208 three phase where the center of the Y is to ground or the grounded conductor close to ground. Anyways, this is a form 14S type meter that has in the back seven prongs uses special meter base. There's some older ones that have five prongs, a little bit more dangerous, called the 12S, uh, which one of the hot wires goes completely through. If you pull the meter, it's still hot, so that's really dicey. But this is a form 14S that all the hot wires go through. Uh, so if you pull the meter, basically uh, the circuit's off. Three-phase meters do not use a normal meter base. So you can't just normally. So they're on eBay and stuff, but you got there's all different configurations. This is called a seven jaw or seven pin. There's also one that has five pins, which the one jaw can be either at the six o'clock position or the nine o'clock position. And then there's variants to where there's a whole bunch of little pins through here. And what those are, those have external current transformers, the little donut things that go around the wires to sense the current. And with those, you can't just use a meter by itself unless you're going to only run a few amps through it. You've got to have external current transformers. These are the spark gaps that are on here. Uh, for lightning protection, it goes to the metal ring. I've got the glass globe off there. But anyways, on a three-phase meter, this is called a seven-jaw meter. There's also a five-jaw meter used on a 12S. Um, this reads out in kilowatts here, and this is a demand meter also. And what that means is that when you're using uh, electric power, this particular meter is calibrated so the interval period is 30 minutes. So as you're using power, if you turn something on, uh, for a few seconds it's not going to register, but if it's on for 30 minutes, this guy is going to go through an inch up and let the power company know, let's say this is on 2222. What that means is you use, during the month, it looks, it's, this is going to integrate up and look for the peak kilowatts you use before this is reset. And normally that's done once a month in the United States. Uh, a fit guy physically has to come by and go through and through the glass going to reset the meter like that. So the next month you might not use your air conditioner because it's in the winter time and maybe you only go up and you use 8 kilowatts max. And so the billing on a three-phase meter is often on what they call a demand meter. Uh, it's on some single-phase power uh, services, but it's mostly on three-phase. Um, it looks at your total power you use for the month in kilowatt hours, plus they ding you for if you use too much kilowatts at one time. Uh, that's because they've got to have bigger transformers. And so the billing scheme looks at the total kilowatt hours you use in a month, like on a normal home meter, plus it goes through and they use, if you use too much, at the same time compared to your kilowatts, the formula is a little bit contrived, but it goes through and it dings you more. Basically, if you had a peak, a very low number of kilowatts instantaneous, and you use a lot of kilowatt hours, it might be like a bunch of street lamp lights hooked together, and it's a continuous load. They know how to plan for it. But if you have a real peaky load, like all of a sudden you turn on a giant 100 kilowatt motor, and it's on for an hour, this thing is going to go up and measure 100 kilowatts. It's going to turn all these dials around. And then if you don't use any for the extra, the whole part of the month, they're going to go and you're going to pay a higher, uh, higher rate per kilowatt hour because they had to have a transformer size for that peak load. Anyways, during the meter reading scheme, the guy goes through on the uh, glass globe and he turns the steel, resets all these to zero, and 
The time interval on this one is a 30 minute time interval. Some of them are 15 minutes, which means if you turn something on for a few seconds, it's going to tend to bump this up, but if it's on for 30 minutes, it's going to go up to the full uh, fifth time constant of what the power you used. And this is a, again, a class 200 meter. It's got shunts inside on here, so there's no external uh, transformers. It's a four wire, uh, three phase in Y. I think this meter is from the 70s. I'm not really sure. Um, it's got the light load adjustments here for fast and slow. Over here it's got light lug fast and slow. There's two adjustments on a three-phase meter and for, for light load and then you have a power factor adjustment here and you've got a power factor adjustment here and I think there's another adjustment on here for full load. I'm not sure exactly where it is. But anyways, this is a fairly complicated meter. It's really a big meter in the sense this thing with the glass globe is is about 10 or 11 inches with the prongs. And um, there's all different types of these meters that are made out there. But you just can't plug one, a three-phase meter into a single-phase socket. A single-phase socket generally has a set of, in the United States, has a set of prongs here, and they've got some in the outboard, and there's none of this metal stuff. Uh, this is a, what they call a Form 14S, which kind of gives the configuration of a meter. Uh, these two prongs are using an uh, this might use the A phase, this might use the B phase, this might be used the C phase. One of these is going to be tied to one of the uh, hot phases or perhaps the neutral, depending on how it's wired. I'm not really sure on that. But uh, there's a lot of different configurations on the way these meters are wired up. And uh, anyways, this is the General Electric VM65S. And here's the slow and fast position here. It's called a two-stator watt-hour meter. And this, of course, is made in the United States. And the demand on here integrates up. It looks for the max usage, max kilowatts during the interval which it's measuring, which means if you go a month and this hasn't been reset, it's going to go ahead and read whatever it was. Maybe it's 2 in the morning, somebody turns a whole bunch of junk on, and this thing goes up and it's, say, 30 kilowatts instantaneous over 30 30 minute period. It's going to stay like that till the meter guy goes through and resets that. And you don't want to reset that yourself because you get in really big trouble because you're violating the agreement. They can go ahead and pull your meter. They can probably charge some huge amount. But anyways, this is a, an analog meter that's a three-phase, what they call in the industry a seven-jaw meter because there's seven pins on here. The other one is called a five-jaw meter, which is for three-phase, which is an older type, more dangerous, which has got two pins, two pins, and then there's a fifth sense pin that can either be at the six o'clock position or the nine o'clock, and it's not turning off one of the hot phases. So in some areas it's been banned, it's a little bit more dangerous because if you pull a meter, the customer side is still hot, so somebody can get, get killed, knocked on their butt or whatever. But anyways, this is the 14S, the Form 14S meter. Class 200 means the max number of amps. It's 120 volts, uh, four wire in Y, which is typically a 208 uh, three-phase delta. Three-phase in Y, excuse me, like for a restaurant, like a McDonald's. Test amps of 30, that's the amps which they test generally the full load setting. Case of H and on this is 21.6, kind of high, but it's a big meter. And again, this is the kilowatt hours you read to read the meter here. This particular meter is on a 7. You look at the 2 and the 3, so that's a 27. And then there's a zero and the one, so that's actually zero two seven, and that's a five. So this is five uh, zero two seven, and that's really hard to tell there because four, yeah, that's a five zero two seven, and that's a five. So you got a five 
5027, if I've got that right. If not, somebody can correct me. But this is the demand. Looks for the peak power. This is the integrated uh, kilowatt hours, which is power times times, which is actually kilowatt hours is energy. Kilowatts is actually power. That's the instantaneous power. And uh, it'll sit there and integrate up over a 30 minute period. Basically, on this type of meter, there's a heater that goes on there or a little gizmo that goes through and it low passes it, which means it's not going to look for something. If you just kicked on something like a motor starter, starter, and it takes a whole bunch of power, like an air conditioner, for the first few minutes or maybe first few seconds, it's not going to move this much or any. But once it's on, over a 30 minute period it's going to go average up and then it's going to go through and that's what they've got to size the transformers for. Uh, this is based on heating and actually the load they have so this has got a interval on this is called the M60 register interval is 30 minutes on the demand this type of meter you can change this to be probably 15 minutes or an hour for the demand portion and uh, there's a whole bunch of different things on this on a smart meter, what they do is, of course, they read the kilowatt hours electronically. They send it through the air, typically with a transmitter, and they can, on a smart meter, reset the kilowatts because we've got one on this building on a single phase meter, and it'll actually tell you the in instantaneous kilowatts, but when they go through and read the meter, somehow it, it goes through and resets it to zero. So on a smart meter, basically, for a demand, it's doing the same thing electronically, but when it commands back and they read the meter for that period, it sets it back. And so 